everyone please silence or turn off your cell phones and electronic devices and stand for a moment of silence. And please remember the gentleman, Tom Walter, who passed away uh, tragically um, yesterday. Okay, and then the pledge. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and white stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in. Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, Manuel. This is Manuel Tejeda, here. Uh, Manuel Tejeda uh, from New Windsor, uh, attends uh, what school? NFA. NFA, Newburgh Free Academy. Uh, thank you for coming in today. Uh, ninth, uh, what, what grade again? Ninth? Ninth grade. Ninth grade today. Thank you very much for your uh, participation. I do have a uh, certificate of appreciation for you. Um, this is uh, from the Orange County Legislature, presented to Manuel Tejeda for your outstanding performance of the National Anthem at the Orange County Legislative Session on February 6, 2020. Signed, uh, L. Stephen Brescia. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, I would like to extend our condolences to uh, Tom Walter's family and his fellow employees in the health department. It was a tragic loss yesterday, and he'll certainly be missed, and it, uh, we're all saddened by that, his passing. Okay, uh, roll call. Benelli? Here. Paduk? Here. Amo? Here. Magnostakis? Present. Benton? Here. Cheney? Here. Fagione? Here. Hines? Here. Kulisek? Here. Lujan? Present. Minuta? O'Donnell, Here. Riskevich, Here. Sassy, Here. Sierra, Here. Staganga, Here. Sutherland, Here. Tortel, Here. Tui, Here. Bureau, Here. Brescia. Here. 21 present. Okay, I would like to invite uh, Anne Marie Maglione from the Office of the Aging and I, whoever she wants to bring up with her. We have two individuals, Tony Ann Nekvapil, oh, you'll correct my pronunciation when we're up there, Frank Porcaro. Uh, Chairman Sassy of the Human Services Committee, uh, Legislator T um, Peter Tui, whose home district is one of the recipients, and Tom Pagione is the home district for the other recipient.
I'd like to say that it's a big honor for you two to be here for 30 years, and uh, we all salute you. Um, Anne Marie will tell us a little bit about you and, and, and give you a plug, and uh, thank you for your service. And Harry will probably say a few words, and others who want to say a couple words as well. Thank you so much. Uh, this is one of my favorite things to do. We have two really impressive people that have been here for 30 years. I'm going to go with Tony first, ladies first, Frank. Uh, Tony was 12 when she started. <laughs> Tony worked her way up, up the ranks. She literally started when she was right out of school, and she is now one of our best case managers. Um, for those of you that don't know, a case manager really handles all of the people that are homebound. She'll go out, she'll do assessments, she'll, she'll ascertain what their needs are, um, she'll keep in contact with them so that there are, you know, loneliness and isolation is a huge issue. She's the eyes and the ears and the heart of, of our office, and we are so totally thrilled that, that you are here, Tony. Um, Danielle, did you want to say anything? No. Okay. <laughs> Harry, did you want to say anything? Uh, I wanted to express to you uh, the sentiments of the county executive, Steve Newhouse. He's not with us today because he's on military duty, but I just got the phone with him recently, and he just said to me, make sure you say thank you to him. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and thank you, Tony. Tom, did you want to say something? He rep Okay, this is, this is Port Jervis at its best, so thank Tony, you. thank you so much. You. Tony, do you, do you want to say something? I started on a whim. <laughs> it was, as she said, right out of high school. Started with the health department um, as a clerk, and the county has been tremendous to me. Um, went to school, had my family, and you supported me as I supported the, the, the residents of this county. And I couldn't ask for a better employer. And also a wonderful director, assistant director, and the staff at the Office for the Aging Poor Family. So I want to thank you very, very much for the career I have at the county. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Yes, please. Yes, and thank you, the legislature, for, for the pins. And we will see you at your 40th, so thank you. <laughs> and, then, um, and then Frank Picaro is, again, Frank, congratulations on your 30 years. Frank actually started um, as a as a food service helper or a cook. So he was a cook in Cornwall. He was a 30-hour cook, so in his spare time, he had two other jobs. You were a bus driver. You were also, did you make process server? Did you make pizza? <laughs> so he, he, he did it all. Um, but he loved he loved what he did, and it really came through. So we were able to move him up to um, 40 hours and then make him a courier. And again, Frank goes out, delivers the meals in all kinds of weather, but he goes above and beyond. He'll take the garbage out for somebody. He'll tell me, you know, so-and-so's not feeling well. They just don't look right. You might want to check them. Goes and tells Tony, because we all work so closely together. Um, Frank, I can't thank you for everything you do. Frank also drives the bus for our holiday uh, light tour. That's on his own. He volunteers for it. Um, I can't thank you enough. You know, it's, uh, it's a coincidence, both Frank and Tony, you, you both came when I left here 30 years ago. So uh, I'm back, so you guys have to stay for a few more years as well. But again, to you, uh, thank you so much on behalf of County Executive Newhouse. Uh, we really appreciate the work you do for such an important population in our county. Thank you. And uh, Kevin Monahan is the nutrition director and the supervisor. Uh, I want to thank Frank and Tony, too. I work more with Frank, but uh, he's a great member of the team. He's always got a smile. He's got that very Italian way of talking. So, and he's always quiet and reserved, which helps sometimes. So. <laughs> but I do really appreciate our help, and so thank you, and congratulations. And then I think Peter? Yeah. Frank, it's my honor to uh, thank you for three decades worth of service. And uh, <laughs> I want to pres uh, I'm honored to present this pin to you, and, uh, and thank you for uh, all, all your work that you do for everybody around the county. Congratulations. <laughs> And 
I also think it's important to note that Frank not only works it, but he lives it. He is a caregiver for his parents. So Frank, thank you for everything. And thank you so much. Thank you, Anne Marie, too. And we saw that article recently about the gentleman from New Windsor, who, you, you know, you touch a very important part of our population. And, and we like to see that as a legislature because it represents the whole county. Thank you for that. And thank you guys for your service. Really appreciate it. Thank you. So Let's do a photo. Frank, we know how you feel. We're, we're Italian Americans over here. We, we get about 13 jobs, too. Okay, these are all receiving files. Oh, public participation, I thought it was all at the end. Okay, it's all at the end. Five speakers at the end of the session. Okay, all right, sorry. Majority Leader Benelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve the minutes of December 5th and December 19th, 2019, and January 6th, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Oh, carried. Okay, Majority Leader Benelli again. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman, once again, and I move to vote collectively on items number 19 through 31. Second. Okay, that'll be done. Okay, any referrals, withdrawals, or consents? Majority Leader Benelli. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a request to withdraw items from the agenda, and I respectfully request that item number 11 on the agenda, which is the resolution of the county legislature of the County of Orange, pursuant to the New York State Constitution, Article 9, and Municipal Home Rule Law, Section 40, sending a home rule request to the New York State Legislature seeking enactment of a Senate bill and an Assembly bill for a special law pursuant to New York State Tax Law, Section 1210, extending the three quarters of 1% increase to the sales tax revenue. I would respectfully ask that this be withdrawn. Okay, there are no objections, that'll be done. Okay, anything else before we, we go on? I have another one. Okay, go ahead. Be patient with me, thank you. Mm -hmm. I respectfully request uh, consent to place on the agenda a resolution of the county legislature of the County of Orange pursuant to the New York State Constitution, Article 9, Municipal Home Rule Law, Section 40, sending a home rule request to the New York State Legislature seeking enactment of a Senate bill and an Assembly bill for a special law pursuant to the New York State Tax Law, Section 1210, extending the increase to the sales tax. Okay, okay. there are no objections. That'll be done. It will be 11A. Okay, we're ready to go to the agenda, Gene? Nope. Yes, uh, Legislator Benton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I'd like to request that item number 39 on the agenda, uh, amending bond resolution dated February 6, 2020, amending the bond resolution adopted February 7, 2019 in relation to the construction of improvements to various park facilities be withdrawn. Okay, there are no objections, that'll be withdrawn. Okay, now we're ready. Okay, AA and A1 receiving a file, no, uh, number one, which is a local law. Legislative Bureau, April 6th, Local law introductory number one of 2020, a local law amending local law number eight of 2016, fixing the compensation for legislators of the Orange County Legislature to be effective for the term commencing on January 1st, 2022, pursuant to section 2.02F of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Could you? Yes. Amo? Yes. Benelli Stockton? No. Ben, Keeney, Fadino? No. Hein? No. Kulasek? Muhan? No. 
Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Quetel? No. Tui, Vero, Gresham. Yes. 16 ice high Okay, I guess um, A2 receiving the final. Um, I just, I don't know, I just have to say something about 12. You can read number two. And then I'll uh, say something. Number two, Ambo Bureau is beginning to bet in local law introductory number two of 2020. A local law amending local law number seven of 2016, fixing the compensation for chairpersons of the statutory committees of the Orange County Legislature to be effective for the term commencing on January 1st, 2022, pursuant to section 2.02S of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll for me. Benelli? Yes. Could you? Yes. Amo? Yes. Benelli Stockett? No. Benton? Cheney? Baggio? No. Hines? No. Pulisic? Wuhan? No. Menuga? Yes. O'Donnell? Briskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Stiganga? Sutherland? Tartel? No. Okay, three receiving file number three. Legislators, Amo, Bureau, again, your Moscavich, local law introductory number three of 2020. The local law amending local law number eight of 2018, fixing the compensation for the chair of the Green Committee, a special committee of the Orange County Legislature to be effective for the term commencing on January 1st, 2022, pursuant to section 2.02S of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Could you? Yes. Amo? Yes. Yeah. Anagnus Hockett? No. Benton? Cheney? Baggione? Hines? Kulisek? Luhan? No. Menuda? O'Donnell? Briskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Stiganga? Sutherland? Tortell? No. Tui? Vero? Gresham? 18 eyes, three no's. Okay, number four. Are they four receiving file number four? Legislative Bureau, Baggio, Stiganga, and Benton. Local law introductory number four of 2020. A local law amending local law number six of 2016, fixing the compensation for the majority of minority leaders of the Orange County Legislature to be effective for the term commencing on January 1st, 2022, pursuant to section 2.02S of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Local law. Benelli? Yes. Could you? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagy Stockett? No. Benton? Cheney, Fagione, Hines, no. Pulisic, Luhan, no. Menuda, O'Donnell, Briskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Hotel, no. Tui, Bureau, Gresham. 17 eyes, four no's. Okay, five is in file number five. Legislative Spagione, Amos, again, the local law introductory number 5 of 2020, a local law amending local law number 7 of 2018, fixing the compensation of party leader, other than majority and minority leader, of the Orange County Legislature, to be effective for the term commencing on January 1st, 2022, pursuant to section 2.02S of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Vote Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Yeah. Manag No. Benton? Cheney, Baggio, Hines, no. Pulisic, Luhan, no. Menuda, yes. O'Donnell, Briskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Jerry, yeah, no. no. Tui, Vero, Gresham. 17 eyes, 4 no's. Okay, 36, receiving 5, number 6. Legislative Bureau, Amos, again, Local law introductory number 6 of 2020, a local law amending local law number 5 of 2016, fixing the compensation for the chairperson of the Orange County Legislature to be effective for the term commencing on January 1st, 2022, pursuant to Section 2.02S of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Vote for Benelli? Yes. Chidu? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnes Dockett? No. Benton? Cheney, Fagione, Hines, no. Pulisic, Luhan, no. Manuka, yes. O'Donnell, Briskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Tortell, no. Tui, Vera, Gresham. 
Steve McFarland, number seven. Legislative Dispatch, Jerome Harris, the gang of 1.9 country, number seven, 2020. advertised that way in the time sale record but they're for the next term not for this and some of us might not be here the next term but we have four votes that are no and they've been consistent those four votes I was expecting them that, that other vote I was not expecting by legislator Nagnostakis and I don't want to put them on the spot but two years ago when we were talking about midterm raises legislator Nagnostakis did a lot of homework with surrounding counties did a very good job justifying why legislators deserve more than they presently get with staffing levels legislative casework, a whole slew, a whole list, very spe well spelled out. So I was really not expecting his no vote today. So I just have to say that, because it's just a little surprising to me. You know, just kind of a shock, to be honest with you. But I expected the other four, and I know some legislators um, don't feel comfortable voting for a raise for themselves, but we're the only ones can, that can do it. And somebody said at committee meeting, uh, legislator Fagion pointed this out to me, well, we shouldn't be uh, proposing our own raises. Well, the unions do it. They propose their own raises with a negotiating team. So um, these are very fair. They're about 1%. Westchester, Rockland County, City of Middletown, Ulster County, 50% raises for the current term. State of New York, 50% over two years for the current term. I, excuse me, it wasn't the current term when the votes came through. Two senators went to the bathroom for the vote, but they're taking the money. They're taking the damn money, I'll tell you that. Roll call. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Possible like to make a comment. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do want to just point out, I have said this in committee before. You know, we I, I represent a community that about six thousand people in my district live under the poverty line. I I, I, you know, I respect all of you here. You all do tremendous work, you all you all represent your, your districts. Uh, I, I chose to vote no for the committee and today because I, I just simply can't uh, in good conscience vote for something that I feel I'm off from or, or benefit from. I do want to just go away from legislators though. I just want to make very clear the last line that we're about to vote on is for the county executive. With all due respect to the county executive, the salary is about as large as most governors get paid across the United States. So I am absolutely opposed to this more than probably any other uh, because again, we owe it to our taxpayers, to our constituents, to our community members to make those tough decisions. And sometimes it means not voting for things that just don't make sense. And again, I respectfully disagree, Mr. Chairman, um, but that's where I stand. I appreciate your comments. Thank you. I understand that. My comments were to all eight resolutions, not the final one for the county executive. It was all the, the one percents for all the others over the eight year term of zeros that some of us will have gotten and some of us will got, have gotten four years of zeros by the next term. Um, that's a long time with no raises. And Rob Sassy and I didn't get raises for our first four years that we were here. It was five years, actually, because I, I was in, a year into the next one before I saw a raise. So, roll call. Yes. Sassy, Sierra, Seganga, Sutherland, Tartel, 
Legislators Benelli, Cool Second Benton, resolution of the Orange County Legislature of the County of Orange, pursuant to New York State Constitution Article 9 and Municipal Home Rule Law Section 40, sending a home rule request to the New York State Legislature seeking enactment of a Senate bill and an Assembly bill for a special law, pursuant to New York State Tax Law Section 1210, extending the three quarters of 1% increase to the sales tax rate. Discussion? Discussion? Yes. Okay, go ahead, Lori, and then Kevin Derry. No problem. Laura, you wanted to? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, on this, normally I'm against any taxes or raises, uh, being put on our constituents, but after some research, the bulk of our sales tax that we receive back from the state comes out of Woodbury Commons, and the bulk of the people in our county who shop at Woodbury Commons are not from Orange County. So that is the reason why I feel like it's important is because it's not benefit. It will be working on our And I, Harry, would you come up and just say a few words before I recognize other legislators? I will say that I spoke at the association at the town's meeting a couple weeks ago, and the endorsement for us to go to this 4% or extra quarter percent than, than we currently have was uh, endorsed unanimously. Subsequently, we just received letters from the three mayors endorsing this change. And we wouldn't have been doing this today. We would have been just going happy with the um, extender with our current sales tax. We're one of the few counties in the state of New York that doesn't have the full 4%. We have three and three quarter, which we've had for years. And in my 26 years here, uh, Rob and I disagree about this, but I checked with Carrie Gallagher, Deputy Commissioner of Finance, and she showed me that we had one increase in the sales tax in my 26 years, and it was in 2004. There were a couple before that, but I think we can uh, verify that. But I will say that um, the county exec, and Harry's going to attest to this, that is on board, only because the state is putting us in this position as they've done many times before, but this year it's worse. There's $6 billion deficit in the state of New York. 
They're gonna balance on the county's backs and cities, towns, and villages as well, but mostly counties with the Medicaid cuts. We're looking at over $10 million. Uh, I've heard numbers of 15 and Harry will speak more clearly to it, but it, it, it's just crazy. You know, they, they, the tax cap, I've said it time and time again, we have a tax cap and the other local municipalities have a tax cap, but the city of New York does not and the state of New York does not. And they go above the 2% every year, year in and year out. It's disgraceful that they're doing it. It's our governor, but the, but the Senate and the Assembly are going along with it as well. So Harry, you wanna say a few words before I recognize other legislators? The gun is to our heads, you know, on this one because we would. None of us like to have any increase in, in sales tax or property tax, but we have no choice with this. With what we're, you know, besides bail reform, the green light law, the free tuition, and everything else, this is really the icing on the cake. Uh, Legislator Fagione, I believe you were first to have your hand up, and then Legislator Nagnastakis. Thank you, Chairman. Sadly, this is another sad example of a spending problem in Albany being passed down to the counties and the municipalities. As someone who represents the city of Port Jervis, I understand the mayor's letter in support of this, but I also represent the entire town of Deer Park and our neighbors in the town of Minnesink, the town of Greenville, and the town of Warwick are all border towns. Each one of these towns borders either Pennsylvania or New Jersey. They will see in their small businesses a direct impact to this. As much as this pains me, because this is a state spending problem. Chairman, I will stand with you and support this, but I will always be mindful that our small businesses are being put in peril by this. Once again, it's an excessive spending problem in Albany 
that's being passed down to us here at the county and sadly to our small businesses, especially on the western edge of this county and across our county. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Legislator Nagnostakis, then Caucus Leader Amo. Thank you. Um, I certainly understand everything that's been said in the position that this county is in at the moment, but um, just to be clear on my part as to what's going on here, every couple of years we ask for a reinstatement of a three quarters of a percent that we already have. Uh, this time around we're asking for a one percent increase, which means really an additional quarter percent increase. And no matter how you want to cut it, it's going to impact every single constituent in Orange County that does any kind of shopping. Um, as, so, as was so eloquently stated, yes, I did do some research two years ago as to what our salaries are compared to other salaries in the area. But to ask for salary increases at the same time that you're asking for constituents to pay an additional quarter percent sales tax, I think is out of the question and outrageous. Thank you very much. I will say that that is for two years hence, or not today. That request for changes in salaries is not for today, okay? But the request two years ago was for a $10,000 increase was the original proposal per legislator. Let's be clear. But uh, caucus leader Amo. We have to look at where we're going with our health care expenditures. It's not going to get any better. Could you speak we up? We can't hear. Probably have to speak close to it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a simple solution. When we look at the problem we have at, at Orange County and Medicaid program nationwide, it's also driven by the federal government. That they're looking at the cost of that pay for Medicaid and what's being used. I mean, we've had conversations with a number of you I have at least about the issue that there are you know, 28 or 30 different components that are part of the federal, uh, that are available on the Medicaid, but we're not mandated to provide them all. We do in New York. And the question we should do is take a look at what we're providing and see if there's a way that we can begin to see these are not being used sufficiently. And maybe we can reduce the cost that way because the long run it's, it's reducing costs. It's not about fixing and getting rid of the percent sales tax. And I think we look at our nursing home and we see the value of 70% of the patient beds in the Medicaid. And, and, you know, I know a lot of us think about this, and it, it, it's sort of a cultural thing in, in, in the United States, but we, we all say, well, we can hide our money so we can be eligible for Medicaid. We're just contributing to the problem. The problem really is structural. So get 1% out of the problem. But I think the answer is looking at it long range. I don't know that we can do any more in the county, but I think we should collectively use our voice to try to get the governor and people in the legislature to see it a little differently. It's not just a fix like this and look in the long run. No, this is just a short-term fix that we're going to, you know, we're going to have to look at transportation costs and so many other things, like you said. You know. Jordi Leader Benelli. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I wholeheartedly agree with my fellow party leader, Mr. Amo. Um, I would just like to point out that we don't often get resolutions before us, especially those put on by consent, where it has bi or tripartisan support. We have the mayors of the three cities, or the mayor of two cities and the manager of another city. We also have from the Association of Towns, Villages, and Cities a resolution uh, put forth by Mayor Welly of the village of Harriman and seconded by Scott Manley, who is the deputy supervisor in the town of Newburgh. Um, as well as our own county executive. And Mr. Poor, I thank you very much for the very quick response you had to be able to provide us to be able to move forward with this motion today. Because as you saw, we withdrew our original motion that came out of committee to be able to address this situation. So we're faced with, and this is where I think it bears, just if you would uh, indulge me for a moment, one of the whereases in this particular resolution talks about the increase to Orange County sales tax rate to a maximum of 1% is necessitated by one, New York State shifting its financial burden caused by the New York State Medicare program to local counties without any consideration for modifying benefits or eligibility requirements. Number two, the increased New York State initiative programs and reforms, such as the Green Light Law, 
bail reform, criminal justice reforms, assigned council representation and, uh, arraignments, and public safety concerns. Number three, reduce state funding for county-owned nursing homes, social services, mental health, and public health state-mandated programs. Number four, increased employee pensions and benefits, while New York State requires local municipalities and school districts to still maintain a 2% on the um, cap on the real property taxes. This is what we have been faced for. We just found out about a lot of the implications of this, and this is why this was monitored, um, modified, and this was put on by consent today. And, and I thank everybody for putting all of this together, especially staff that were modifying this to up to the last minute. So thank you, and I would hope that all legislators would support this at this time. Thank you. Minority, minority Leader, excuse me, Paduk. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, I, I would agree with Katie and everything that she said. The only problem here is that we're requesting this, and there's no conf confirmation that we're going to get our increase. So we may be affected in a lot of other ways if we don't get this. So where do we get the additional millions of dollars we need for Medicaid if we don't all support this? So I agree we should support it. Uh, hopefully the state legislature, keep in mind it's an election year for them as well, to increase uh, sales tax. However, it was said that you know most of the counties in, in uh, New York State have a 4% rate. So uh, to help ourselves out, to reduce the burden on our taxpayers, I could support this 100%, and I hope we all do. Thank you. And I would say to that that you have much more pull with our local senators and assembly than we do. You say we have total control of the legislature, the Republicans. Well, they have total control up there. So your lobbying is going to be of utmost importance on this. And thank God we are we do have that quarter percent because most, most counties don't have that luxury. They're already at the full 4%. So thank you. Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. Good. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Yes. Benton? Yes. Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Stegenga? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Biro? Russia? 20 eyes, 1 abstention. Okay, number 12. Legislators Tortell and Staganga, resolution amending resolution number 391 of 2019, a resolution pursuant to local law number 9 of 2018, ethics and disclosure law, section 8, paragraph A, amending appendix A, list of positions of certain county officers and local political officials required to file a financial disclosure form by deleting the current list and adopting an amended list in its place. Discussion? Mike. Have my name added, please? Yes, absolutely. Okay, roll uh, Fagione added to. Roll call. Minnelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, number 13. <clears throat> Legislators Tortell and Staganga, resolution of the Orange County Legislature confirming the appointment by the Chairman of the Orange County Legislature to the Orange County Industrial Development Agency pursuant to sections 856 and 912 of a general municipal law. Ms. Kevich added. Paduk added, Vero added, uh, Sutherland added, Fagione, Amo, Hines, Benelli, and Sierra. Okay, and, and Barry as well, Cheney, and, and O'Donnell. You can add my name, but I'd also like to speak on it, please, Mr. Chairman. Yes, okay, absolutely, go ahead. And Benton added, too. Go ahead, Jim. Okay, so there's a number of critical issues with the uh, IDA and the Orange County Funding Corporation as well as the Orange County Accelerator that has come to uh, my attention as a result of the million dollars and the Heritage Trail. Uh, I sent a rather lengthy uh, Freedom of Information request up to uh, 
uh, the Orange County IDA, and I'm still going through some of the emails I got back. But let me just start with the million dollars for the trail. Originally, back in, I think, 15 or 16, the IDA voted for it, and no fault of their own, uh, because of delays on the trail, uh, it was never given to Orange County, and that seems to be when the authorities' budget office got involved with the million dollars. And here is where it becomes very interesting, in my opinion. The uh, ABO sent a letter to the IDA regarding the million dollars. Uh, the chairwoman, Rogulski, actually forwarded that letter to the legislator, uh, our legislature, and we all got copies of it. Uh, there was many of us that disagreed with her opinion of that letter. Her opinion of the letter stated, uh, she stated this herself, that the letter said that the IDA could not give us the million dollars. Uh, myself and other legislators have a totally different interpretation of that letter. Uh, at an E&E &E committee, uh, the chairwoman, again, uh, we told her we were going to resubmit the IDA application with additional information. And uh, our uh, economic development uh, boss here, Bill Fioravante, rewrote the application. So one of the emails I got back as a result of the FOIL, uh, I'll just read uh, part of it from November 18th, uh, from the chairwoman to uh, uh, the CEO over at the IDA. Uh, hi, I will be there, and the county did not submit any information that would cause a change of opinion at the ABO. The legislature will have to accept the facts at some point. The point I'm making on this email is that uh, she's supposed to be on our side. She's not supposed to be on the ABO side. Next. We asked her specifically, they told us, she told us, uh, they were going up to Albany to meet with the authorities' budget office. We requested to go with them. This was in the minutes of the e and &E, and you can find it there yourself. We told the IDA specifically that the legislature wanted to be there. Our county attorney, Langdon Chapman, also requested to be at that meeting. Here, I'll go to email number two. And this is from the IDA attorney, Kevin Dowd, to our attorney, uh, county attorney, Langdon Chapman. Langdon, the meeting already took place. Scheduling was tight for the ABO, so our folks went up there. Our executive staff and our Albany lobbying attorney met with the ABO director and two of his staff to discuss the Heritage Trail application. Steve Bresser was present via telephone for most of the meeting. As explained to me, the ABO still does not consider this application a proper, quote, project as defined in the IDA authorization legislation. I believe the ABO will be sending the IDA le a letter to that, to that effect after a debriefing from Steve Brescher, if county officials still want to have their own meeting with the ABO, they can certainly do that on their own. So the point of this email is that we specifically asked them to go with them, all right? And the fact that they didn't tell us they were going up there and then actually said scheduling was tight for the ABO, well, that's correct. But another email that was foiled tells you it wasn't that tight. They requested the meeting with the ABO on Tuesday, November 19th. The ABO answered them later in the afternoon, a little after four o'clock, and the meeting was scheduled for six days later on the following Monday. So for six days, our, our, our IDA was silent to the e, e committee, as well as every legislator here, about their meeting with the ABO, which we specifically requested to attend. Just a couple more emails. One was 
from Richard Bamberger, which I think uh, Legislator Benton was kind enough to Google and finally find out who he was. Uh, he's on the payroll of the IDA as a PR person to draft letters uh, to respond to Times Hill Record articles regarding the IDA. Talk about a waste of money. Alex Betke is their lobbyist, another waste of IDA money. Back to the chairwoman, Rogulski. We asked her not once to vote on this after we resubmitted our application with additional information. We asked twice for a vote from the IDA. She didn't even have the courtesy to put it on the agenda. The managing director, Mr. Casolino, he is not even listed on their letterhead. So that, to me, is another red flag. One of the emails from Mr. Casolino is from his other company regarding IDA business, is Galileo. Uh, Mr. Casolino is involved in a lot of other uh, industries, but he certainly shouldn't be sending out emails about the IDA on his other business. Uh, if you review the uh, 2018 budget and compare it to the 2020 budget just submitted, the salaries for the IDA in 2018 were $375,000. The salaries for 2020 are now $575,000. There's a new COO at the IDA. We don't know where that person came from. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure the e and &E committee has never seen a resume about that. And critically, the 2020 budget, I've never seen a budget like this, is minus $2.5 million in the red budget. During our discussions about the uh, $1 million for the trail, uh, three current members of the uh, IDA came in and addressed a number of uh, legislators, Mr. DeSalvo, Mr. Gatos, and Mr. Gratz, Grab Uh They were asked to wait a month before they voted on the funding for the IDA or whether it was going to go to the Orange County Funding Corporation to fund it. They were specifically waited, asked to wait. Well, the very next day, they voted to get the million dollars out of the Orange County Funding Corporation. And I can tell you, as uh, the former executive director of the IDA for seven years and the Orange County Funding Corporation, I'm not even sure they can do that. I looked during all the uh, FOIL request for a letter from the ABO, whether that was permissible, I didn't see one. We d deserve an explanation on why we were told one thing and then the very next day they did another. And Mr. Nagastakis, I like this next comment regarding the chief financial officer at the IDA. We don't even know whether they have $11 million there, 12, 14, 15 million dollars in the bank. But uh, the same person, CFO over at the IDA, uh, was the CFO while I was the deputy county exec who couldn't tell us where the enterprise fund money was for Valley View. Now he's in charge of $15 million over at the IDA. Um, one of the things that was brought up by uh, the three members of the uh, IDA board when they met with us, they were very concerned and were advised by a few attorneys on their side, the IDA side in Albany, that they were, if they voted this money from the IDA, they would be arrested. Their words, not mine. They said the attorney general was advised and they were advised that there will be uh, misconduct of their fiduciary uh, uh, ethics and they would be subject to arrest. 
I have not found any emails in the FOIL request yet from the Attorney General. On the other hand, during that same meeting, we told the, the three board members that we would supply them with a written letter of opinion from our legislative attorney and also the county attorney. I says we have a different opinion on whether that money can be spent from the IDA. At that time, Legislator Hines, I won't speak for him, but he mentioned two other attorneys who also had the same opinion that it was legally permissible to get that million dollars from the IDA. So I'm going to be calling for a full inspection of the IDA, of their finances, of exactly who's working there, who's not working there, how they can submit a budget for minus $2.5 million. So with that, I'm glad to see that uh, John McCary will be a new member at the IDA. Uh, one thing, uh, uh, we'll be voting on Chairman Drescher. In, in a moment, I can tell you working for 10 years with Chairman Drescher on the IDA and uh, with the e, e committee here, uh, never, ever has anything come up but nothing but high regards for his work on the committee. I'm not saying anything against anybody else, but with uh, five-year terms, uh, I'll be supporting uh, Mr. McCary. I'll be supporting uh, Chairman uh, Brescia, and I'm going to make a motion to table Mr. DeSalvo till we get a full explanation of what is going on at the IDA. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, where were we? Okay, um, number 13. Oh. Got a motion and a second? Okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Biro, Brescia. 20 ayes, one abstention. Okay, number 14. <coughs> Legislators Tortel and Staganga, resolution of the Orange County Legislature confirming the appointment by the chairman of the Orange County Legislature to the Orange County Funding Corporation, a local development corporation authorized pursuant to section 1411 of the New York State not-for-profit corporation law. Discussion? Fagione added, Briskevich added, Paduke added. Roll call, roll call, excuse me. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulasek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassi, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes, one abstention. Okay, number 15. Legislators Menuda and Staganga, resolution of the Orange County Legislature confirming the reappointment by the Chairman of the Orange County Legislature to the Orange County Industrial Development Agency pursuant to sections 856 and 912 of the General Municipal Law. Yes. yes. You didn't make the motion yet. Yeah. didn't make a motion yet. Yeah. You're making a motion to, to table? I make a motion to table number 15 Second. and okay. number 16. Okay, we'll vote on those two collectively, we can we? 15 and 16. Motion to table, there will be no discussion on a motion to table. Roll call. Benelli? No. Paduke? No. Amo? No. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? No. Cheney? No. Fagione? No. Hines? No. Kulasek? No. Lujan? Yes. Menuda? No. O'Donnell? Ruskevich, no. Sassy, no. Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, no. Tortel, yes. 
Tui? No. Vero? No. Brescia? No. Six eyes, 14 no's, one abstention. Okay. Yes, Legislator Fagione. Chairman, thank you. And I want to thank Legislator O'Donnell for his research into the IDA. And uh, we look forward to uh, learning more what he has learned. Um, in his comments, he had mentioned the chairwoman, Mary Ellen Rogolsky, several times, a gentleman by the name of Bamberger. He mentioned the ABO. He talked about meetings. He talked about Alex Bickey. And he mentioned uh, Mr. Casalino's name once or twice. Uh, in all of that, at the end, he supported the names that are here before us. So resolutions 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 address three gentlemen, Mr. McCary, Mr. DeSalvo, and in the, in the next will be Mr. Brescia. And in my experience in the five years that I've been here in the legislature, uh, I am proud to say that I sat here with Legislator DeSalvo in the legislature, and he brought a wealth of knowledge to this body. We may not have always agreed on everything. We agreed on a lot of things, but when we disagreed, he used logic and he used intelligence to bring his point across. And I would ask that you would add me as a sponsor to resolutions number 15 and 16 for, legis for Mr. DeSalvo, and I look forward to seeing him get his reappointment to the IDA. He's the type of leader we need in a body like that, and he's someone that I trust and I know will make the right decisions, not just for his part of the county, which is the eastern end of the county, but I know he looks after Western Orange County as well. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, Legislator Hines, then, then Riskevich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think uh, today is the start of the fix of the IDA. Bringing Mr. McCarry on board, you'll remember, I guess, about five or six months ago, I called for the resignations of many people from the IDA. As far as I know, we didn't get any yet. And uh, I didn't call for resignations from DeSalvo. I didn't call for resignations from Brescia. And John McCarry is new to us because they voted to keep the million dollar promise that was made. They voted to do the right thing, to follow the guidance of the legislature. They knew what we wanted, they, uh, they, they did the right thing. Those are not the problems at the IDA. There are a lot of problems, Mr. O'Donnell's right. Today's the first day of the fix because we only get to confirm those that are up for reappointment or newly appointed. Uh, so I wholeheartedly uh, support Mr. DeSalvo in this. I would also like to be named a sponsor on both. Jimmy is the breath of fresh air that we need at the IDA, as is Mr. McCary and Mr. Brescia. So I will be supporting them all. Those are the three people that are doing a great job over there. And uh, there's a, Mr. Gatos is doing fine over there too. My problem was with the existing other three who uh, reneged on our promises. And you've all heard my comments with respect to them and how they, in my mind, disrespected this legislature and should have resigned, but to date we didn't get those resignations. And I hope that when those appointments come up, whether it's next year or the following year, we can make the necessary changes there as well to fix many of the problems that Legislator O'Donnell pointed out. Thank you. Okay, Majority Leader Benelli. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. Yes, Paul, you were next. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I'll add my name to both these resolutions. And um, I just, I also want to thank uh, Legislator O'Donnell for bringing these issues forward. Uh, as I said earlier today, we'll bring these issues to E&E, &E, uh, bring the IDA in as many times as we have to to uh, get some resolution to them. Um, there are issues there, there are problems there. However, uh, Mr. DeSalvo is not one of those problems. I think, uh, as Mr. Hines uh, stated, he's going to be uh, very helpful in addressing those issues and uh, getting to the bottom of them, uh, as well as uh, Mr. McCary. So, uh, um, Mr. Salvo has my full support, and I would hope that uh, all of us would support him. Thank you. Majority Leader Benelli. Mr. Chair, uh, we've heard some very serious um, comments made by Legislator O'Donnell, and I, I applaud his efforts, I applaud his research, and I agree with him. And as Legislator Hines said, today is the beginning of getting to the bottom of this and getting to the fix not appointing or reappointing one member that has demonstrated that he is working in good faith. Uh, he was one of the people that put together a meeting with certain legislators in order to get to the bottom of this as far as the funding for the Heritage Trail, because 
needless to say, we were rightfully very, very upset when we heard the news we weren't going to be able to get the funding that was promised to us many years ago. So while I understand what Mr. O'Donnell says, and I support it, and I look forward to continuing to find out exactly what's happening at the IDA, and there's a lot of questions that have to be answered, I don't see any purpose in not reappointing one individual that really is not responsible for many of this because he's also somebody that's a relatively new member to that particular committee or organization. So uh, I, I do support the reappointment of Jim DeSalvo to both the IDA and the funding board. And you may add my name as well to the Absolutely. Yes, Legislator Cheney added. Chris Cavaccio already added. Okay, Minuta added. Oh, you want to speak to? Okay, go ahead. All right, uh, one more comment I left out. Um, you know, in regards to the funding for the Heritage Trail, I know, uh, you know, we did ask them to delay the month. However, that never came to a vote over there at the IDA, so there's nothing there to table. Um, but I do remember Mr. DeSalvo saying that he was committed to getting us the $1 million in whatever way, shape, or form we could get it, uh, which uh, he has done. So, thank you. Thank you. And this legislative side one added. Okay. I will say it was actually a $200,000 vote from the funding corp two months ago, and it was an additional $800,000. So it was a million in the aggregate. Um, I just have to say that, uh, you know, I can understand Legislator O'Donnell's frustrations with some things. Legislator O'Donnell is intimately, or was intimately involved with the IDA, and he did a great job, thought outside the box, brought a lot of economic development to the County of Orange. Um, but. You know, Jim DeSalvo uh, was a very good appointment. He's, uh, he chairs the audit committee, uh, brings a wealth of knowledge into the banking industry, um, has tried, and he also tries to think outside the box. I and mean, he's pushed for an accelerator in Highland, Highlands, excuse me, the town of Highlands or the village of Highland Falls, and uh, Lori Totel has been involved with that too. She's lobbied for it as well. Um, and I think Jim does a very good job. There are concerns, but I, I said at the E&E &E committee, um, we've done a lot of things at the ID that weren't, weren't done in the past. Um, the Paris reporting, Lori V. Asusu gave you an update uh, over a year ago, how up to date we are on the Paris reporting, which wasn't quite accurate in the past. Um, the due diligence and all the streaming and everything else is online. Um, just many good things are happening with the IDA. The Excel, you know, I don't know about the, the 500,000. That could include the accelerators, the expenses for the accelerators. I'm sure it does, but we can get an accounting at E&E, &E, some of it in regular sessions, some of it in executive session. Um, there's so many good things. I mean, the, the, the county IDA sp spent quite a bit of money on the Zeal facility on Broadway in the city of Newburgh. We sent mega dollars more than anything on the armory in Newburgh, and we know what a great job is going on at the armory. Jimmy, you're involved there heavily, and Jim Kulisek is too. Um, just so many things around the county. The Accelerator City of Middletown. Uh, the county IDA invested much more than the city of Middletown did in that, and there's costs involved in that. Uh, Port Jervis is looking for something over there. So many things. I mean, the Purple Heart Hall of Honor in New Windsor, so much money, and there's so many positive things. So I think we need to accentuate those get to the concerns with the expenses, the payroll, that should be laid out for us in a sense, even though um, they're their own independent body. Um, and some of the other concerns that Jim brought out, but there's a lot of positive things. And the pilots too, we talked about doing an outreach with Kiwanis Clubs, Lions, and school boards especially, because a lot of school boards and a lot of people in the County of Orange do not understand pilots. And we have a senator, and I, I keep knocking him today, but he goes around the county, I've never seen him at one IDA meeting in my 18 years, I've never seen him at one IDA meeting. I've seen him blast pilots in the pictures in the Times Herald Record throughout the County of Orange. Never was a problem on, on County 99 in Montgomery and some of these other places, but now you have two mega facilities in Montgomery alone, 1.3 million with Medline and Amazon, Amazon over a million dollars with companies that can probably afford to come in without a pilot. And he might be right about that, could very well be right. If they can afford to come here and they're coming here without a pilot, then they might not need a pilot. Just go with the 485B, which they're entitled to by state law. But some of these businesses, and he doesn't understand this and some others don't, are not coming here without a pilot. And there are millions of dollars in taxes paid in this county with those pilots. From day one, very few of them get, get any uh, abatement for the whole amount in the first year. 
Very few. Legoland was a long-term pilot. John McCary was involved with that. But it's going to be a lot of money for the County of Orange. I know there's people that oppose to it, but it's going to be a lot of sales tax money generated here. Could have been maybe a little bit more, but I got you, Katie. I got you. I'm not quite done yet, though. Now you made me lose my chance. <laughs> All right, I'm on a roll. But I just want to say that um, we'll bring them into E&E. &E. We'll get some more of those concerns addressed. But there's a lot of positive things that don't get reported that are happening at the IDA. Majority Leader Benelli. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, and I apologize for distracting you. Um, the one thing I also did want to mention is I, res I respectively would like to ask um, Legislator Briskevich, who is the Chairman of E&E, &E, Education and Economic Development, to um, put this on a current, uh, an upcoming agenda to be able to get to some of the very uh, serious questions and serious concerns that Mr. O'Donnell had put forth, and I believe he is on your but I mean, I, I think that this warrants much, much needed discussion. So if you can work on that, I know your agenda is usually a pretty packed, so if you can make time, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Just one more thing I forgot to mention was the Cornell Cooperative Extension, which we all fully support, was given quite a bit of money for the purchase of the property in the town of Mount Hope. Paul, you pushed for that, and Janet, is that in your district, I think? Yeah, it's in Janet's district, so. Okay. Uh, John McCary, as a member of Cornell, was very involved, too. Can't forget, he's been involved in everything, for Christ's sakes. Okay, roll call on, where are we on, 13? No, 15, I'm sorry, 15. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Baggione? Yes. Hines? Yes. Kulisek? Lujan? Menuda? Yes. O'Donnell? No. Riskevich? Yes. Sassy? Sierra, Staganga, yes. Sutherland, yes. Tortell, Tui, Biro, Brescia. 19 ayes, one no, one abstention. Okay, number 16. Legislators Menuda and Staganga, resolution of the Orange County Legislature confirming the reappointment by the chairman of the Orange County Legislature to the Orange County Funding Corporation, a local development corporation authorized pursuant to section 1411 of the New York State not-for-profit corporate corporation law. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek, Luhan, Minuta, O'Donnell, no. Ruskevich, yes. Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Bureau. Okay, no, number 17, um, and mine is a two-year term, not a five-year term like the other members, just so you know. Okay, Jean? What's that? Did I want? Um, yeah, you're going to read it. I'm sorry. I was just saying that it's a two-year yeah. term for me, no. not, not a four-year like the other members. Okay. Legislators Tortell and Staganga, Re resolution of the Orange County Legislature confirming the reappointment by the chairman of the Orange County Legislature to the Orange County Industrial Development Agency pursuant to sections 856 and 912 of a general municipal law. <coughs> discussion. Bureau added Sutherland, Fagione, Ruskevich, Hines. And sassy. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Totel? Tui? Bureau, Brescia, 20 ayes, one abstention. And Jimmy, you can give me a recall in two years if I screw up, all right? <laughs> you and Kevin are going to be watching me closely. I already spoke on your behalf. I got no problems with that. I got problems with putting people on for five years till we get answers. And you're good. Okay, 18. Legislators Tortell and Staganga, resolution of the Orange County Legislature confirming the reappointment by the chairman of the Orange County Legislature to the Orange County Funding Corporation, a local development corporation authorized pursuant to section 1411 of New York State, not-for-profit profit corporation law. 
discussion? Yes, uh, add it, Bruskevich, add the Duke, or you want to speak? Okay, um, Kevin add, Tui add, and Mike, uh, Fagione add, Sassi add, and yes, Mike, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would have to say I, I totally agree with uh, Legislator O'Donnell. Uh, for I've been here a long time myself. Uh, some concerns at the IDA I've mentioned to uh, investigative committees. Um, I'm hoping that some of the things that Jim O'Donnell's talking about we can resolve. Um, and if we can't, then we need to change the people on the IDA as, as, as well. This is hard to say, but I was at a, an IDA meeting and I watched our chairman in, in while he was going through, uh, the IDA was presenting the facts. And he stood up for something that I truly believe in as regards to what we're talking about. You know, funding for different uh, aspects of whether it's a municipality, whether it's the county, uh, in regards to things that should be funded. Uh, Steve voted against one thing that I, I, I don't get a vote there, but I was mad about what was proposed. And the chairman actually stood up for actually what I believed in too. So, I think Mr. Bresch is doing a great job, and that's why uh, I'll support him as well. And I can't wait to hear uh, what happens with uh, some of these people on the IDA. Uh, I've had concerns for many years in regards to the leadership up there, and, and I'm hoping that some of that stuff gets brought out. So thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, Fagion, Legislator Fagion. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, with these resolutions before us, Chairman, maybe you can help into the record answer the question. What are the salaries of these positions on these boards? Zero. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. <laughs> yeah, I think legislator, I mean, Jim DeSavo said something about that. What, you, what was it you said? You get a couple days in heaven, maybe, for serving on the IDA? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? <coughs> Cheney? Baggione? Hines, Kulasek, Luhan, Minuta, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassi, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Bureau, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, 19 through 31 collectively. Yes, you want to? Okay, not a problem. Yeah, not a problem. Anybody else want to be added to certain ones? Okay. Janet, you do all of them? Janet? 2425. 2425. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Luhan? Menuda, O'Donnell, Briskevich, Sassi, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 ayes. Okay, number 32. Legislator Benton, resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2019 Orange County budget for the Orange County Department of Finance, pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Okay. Discussion, Fagione added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Lori Tubal. Oh, Kevin Darian, too? Sorry. I had my head down for one second here. <laughs> Joel and, and Mike Paduk, too. Okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Luhan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Briskevich? Sassi? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. Yes. Two we added, please. Retro. 33. Legislators Benton and Sutherland, resolution authorizing the county executive to enter into an agreement with certain Orange County municipalities providing for the exemption from county taxation of lands owned and used by them for water supply and related purposes, pursuant to section 4063 of real property tax law. Okay. Discussion. Fragione added. Minuta added. Sierra added. Sassy added. Roll call. Oh, Totel and Kevin Darian also. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Luhan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Briskevich? Sassi? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? 
Totel Tui Bureau Brescia, 21 eyes. Number 34, bond resolution two thirds. Legislators Benton and Hines, bond resolution dated February 6, 2020, bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the acquisition of equipment for the record center in Goshen, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 532,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 532,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Discussion? Roll call. Luhan added, or you want to Luhan added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines, Kulisek, Luhan, Minuta, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Biro, Brescia. 21 eyes. Yes. Yes. On this, on this last item, uh, just to be clear, uh, we discussed uh, the monies that are being allocated. Uh, it is my understanding that these monies are being earmarked for these funds until we can figure out what we're actually doing with the Right, you clarified that with you clarify that with Jim Burpo. Jim Burpo. Yep, yes. no problem. And we had a tour over there this week, earlier in the week. Many legislators attended. It was a good tour. Okay, roll call. Just do one more. Oh, I'm sorry. Jesus, come on, Steve. All right, what number are we on? I'm 35. 35. 35. <laughs> Legislators Benton and Benelli, bond resolution dated February 6, 2020, bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the acquisition of computer hardware and software and the construction of related infrastructure improvements for the Department of General Services, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $1,765,000, appropriating said amount therefore and authorizing the issuance of 1765000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Paduk, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Luhan, Minuta, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, 36. Legislators Benton and Sutherland, bond resolution dated February 6, 2020, bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the acquisition of various golf course equipment at the Stony Ford Golf Course, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 103,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 103,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Discussion? I just have to say this went a lot smoother at Ways and Means than it did at Physical. So, you know, next time they need to bring Rob Bressler every time with pictures and every discussion and everything, right? We went a lot. Of, yes, Chairman. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, it was not because of me. It was definitely because they brought the head groundskeeper with them uh, for the, uh, the appropriate information. Exactly. Uh, but you helped it along, too. So. Roll call. Vanelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes, Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek, Luhan, Minuta, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes, 1 no. Okay, number 37. Legislators Paduke and Minuta, a resolution authorizing the county executive to accept the proposed traffic signal easement in the town of Buck Hill. Discussion? Roll call. Oh, add to hotel. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Luhan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Vero? Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 38. Legislators Benton and Tui. Resolution authorizing the county executive to accept a proposed right-of-way dedication parcel in the town of Montgomery. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Luhan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. 
Okay, 39 withdrawn. They're coming back with other options. Number 40. Legislators Minuta, Tui, Benton, and Kulasek. Bond resolution dated February 6, 2020. A bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the acquisition of various golf course equipment at the Hickory Hill Golf Course, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 147,000, appropriating said amount, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 147,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion? Yes. Kulasek removed as a sponsor. Okay. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Bulasek? Lujan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassi? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, number 41. Legislators Minuta, Tui, Benton, and Paduke. Bond resolution dated February 6, 2020. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the acquisition of various park equipment at the Thomas Bowl Memorial Park, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 76,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 76,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Discussion? Yes. Sierra added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulasek, Lujan, Minuta, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassi, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Number 42. Legislators Tui, Minuta, Benton, and Agnostakis. Bond resolution dated February 6, 2020. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing non highway paving. Stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 100,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 100,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Discussion? Yes. Kevin Darian, added? Luan added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Luhan, Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassi, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Number 43. Legislators Minuta and Benton. Bond resolution dated February 6, 2020. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the partial reconstruction of various county roads, strength paving, stating the estimated maximum cost there of $1,300,000 appropriating said amount, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 1,300,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Discussion, Bureau added, Tautel, Lujan added, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Duke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassi? Sierra? Saganga? Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. And number 44. Legislator Sassi and Fagione. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Sheriff's Office to accept and appropriate funds from a state criminal aliens assistance program pursuant to section 99-H of a general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Tui added, Stiganga added, Minuta added, Sierra added. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassi? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. 45. <coughs> Legislators Lujan and Tortell, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Health to accept and appropriate funds from the Menacing Valley Central School District pursuant to section 99-H of the general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Fagion added. Lujan added. You're already on there. Shannon, you should probably be on there, right? Menacing, isn't that you too? Or? No? Okay. Oh, you, all right, put Janet on there too. We're scavenge on there. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? 
and Agnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Bureau, Brescia, 21 ayes. 46. Legislators Tartell and Amo, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Social Services to accept and appropriate funds from the New York State Office of Victim Services pursuant to section 99-H of the general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Uh, Menuda added, uh, Paduke added, Sutherland added, Tui, Tartell, was it Tartell or no? Lujan, I mean, I'm sorry. Roll call. Benelli? Paduk, yes. Emo, yes. Nagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. And 46. Seven. 47. I thought so. 47. Legislators Tortell and Tui, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County. Office for the Aging to accept and appropriate a donation pursuant to section 215 of county law. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. 48. Legislators Tortell and Tui, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Office for the Aging to accept and appropriate grant funds from the New York State Office for the Aging, pursuant to section 99-H of a general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia, 21 eyes. 49. Legislators Tortell, Sutherland, and Lujan, an act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create aging services specialists, Spanish speaking, I'm sorry, Spanish English speaking at the Orange County Office for the Aging pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion, cool sec added, okay. Duke, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a point, uh, this is, I'm not sure if we have a, a Spanish, English speaking, uh, aging service specialist at, at the Office of the Aging. And this is gonna go away after this grant fund, when this grant funding's over. So that should be something we should be looking into because it's important, I, I would suggest. Okay. Legislator Bureau, can you just mention that to um, Steve Gross, maybe looking? Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, Sierra added to I'm sorry. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Totel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, number 50. Legislators Totel, Tui, Staganga, and Lujan. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedule is to create one senior social caseworker and one casework assistant at the Orange County Department of Social Services, pursuant to Section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 51. Legislators Tui, Benton, Staganga, and Tortell, an act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to reclassify two laborers, one seasonal, to laborers, two, at the Orange County Department of Public Works, Division of Environmental Facilities and Services, pursuant to Section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, number 52. Legislator Chairman Brescia. 
Resolution appointing members of the Orange County Economic Development and Gaming Committee pursuant to Article 4, Section G of the Legislative Manual. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Steganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. In number 53. Chairman Brescia, resolution appointing members of the Labor Relations Advisory Committee pursuant to Article 4, Section G of the Legislative Manual. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Anagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Steganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 ayes, Mr. Chairman, and the desk is clear. Okay, we have sp uh, five speakers. Uh, Animal, you're up first. Animal Hughes on the caves again. somebody gets hurt. We also need to look into a museum or a global study group that's willing to come in and make this a point of destination for tourism and work with our tourism department and put our thinking caps on and take an advantage of an opportunity. There's only five spaces in North America where they have this kind of feature. There could be the link to what went on in all mankind in some of these caves that haven't been thoroughly exhumed and studied. I would like to meet with you guys, whoever may want to. I have a ton of information here and I have tons and tons more of information here. This is the gleaned condensed version. Let's get together with tourism. Let's put some money in the county's pocket and protect us from having this go out the window unnecessarily. Thank you. Thank you, Animal. 
Okay, Mary P. Is it Altabella? You'll correct me when you come up. I said it right, Altabella from Chester regarding the Duchess Quarry Caves. The landscape in Orange County is changing. We have warehouses, amusement parks, shopping malls, high density housing, power plants, and more efficient highways, to name a few of the newer and thriving opportunities in our county. This is progress. This is also consistent in the general economy and development of the Hudson Valley. But it does not make us unique. We are more than that. What we possess here and can lay claim to is an environment known as the Duchess Quarry Caves at Lookout Mountain, and this is truly unique. Our county legislative group has previously protected these Paleolithic dwellings, and I am here to remind this current group that we must make every effort to continue to protect these caves for prosperity. Our Cowan County government website there exists the most extensive documentation of these caves from the County Planning Board. If any of you haven't read it, I urge you to do so. It is thorough. So much energy and effort has been put forth that recognizes the importance of these caves. Because of the discovery of these caves right here in Orange County, the history of man's existence on this continent had to be rewritten. I know there are liabilities and logistics involved. There are also civic organizations who stand by at the ready for action to assist in the process of preservation. Do not become the legislative group that overdevelops the area around this site that will threaten the caves forever. Surely a legislative group that can make so much progress in Orange County should be able to secure this important site and be remembered as the stewards and protectors of this unique, unique environment known as the Duchess Quarry Caves. I'd like to leave you this and a document. We've started petitions from uh, residents in Orange County to support this. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. You can leave it with the clerk. Uh, next speaker, John Allegro, um, regarding the dangerous conditions on County Route 44. Good afternoon. Thank you for your time. Uh, John Allegro from Monroe. This is my next door neighbor, Dennis Buckley. We live on uh, Seven Springs Mountain Road. Uh, I guess more commonly known to the county is County Route 44. We wanted to speak with you today about uh, what's been going on on the road. So I'm going to run through this list of some issues that, that we see pretty much every day and multiple times per day, uh, including uh, passenger vehicles traveling uh, at unsafe speeds, especially downhill toward Route 208, State Route 208. Uh, passenger vehicles crossing into the line into oncoming, oncoming traffic. Uh, they pass uh, school buses that are stopped with red lights. Uh, the construction vehicle situation has become a complete disruption to our peaceful existence on the road. Uh, there'll be coming down with full loads of fill, and they're doing uh, engine braking or jake braking, and that basically sounds like a, uh, a 50 caliber machine gun. That starts at about seven in the morning and goes on until the end of the uh, construction day. Uh, these construction vehicles are also coming around blind turns, veering off into the opposite, opposite lane, oncoming traffic lane. Uh, cars will pass vehicles on the wrong side of the road. None of County Route 44 is a passing lane road uh, going up the hill. V construction vehicles going up the hill very slowly. Passenger vehicles will go around uh, and go on the wrong side of the road. Uh, the intersection of Seven Springs Road, which is a Monroe Town Road, if you're heading toward uh, Gonzaga Park and you want to make a left or a right, onto County Route 44. As vehicles are coming up County Route 44, the grade makes it so that the person on Seven Springs Road can't see a vehicle coming up. I've almost got clipped a few times at that intersection trying to go home. Um, we just saw storm drain, storm drain damage at the corner of 208 and 44 today on the way over here. 
Uh, and that intersection is basically untenable. We can't get from County Route 44 onto Route 208 uh, at just about any time, any time of the day. Uh, there are a lot of new children in the area who've moved down from Curious Joel, and uh, they're small children waiting for buses every day, and uh, they're right at, right at the edge. There's no shoulder, there's no sidewalk, and these construction vehicles are coming, hugging the edge of the road uh, right near these kids. It's, it's very frightening. Uh, a couple of suggestions we have uh, to help solve, alleviate some of these problems. Uh, number one, make, make the entire County Route 44 a 30 mile per hour speed limit. Uh, make the intersection by Gonzaga a four-way stop that would help slow vehicles down that are coming up the hill toward toward KJ. Uh, institute a no engine braking law to help solve the noise issue, uh, and desperately needed a traffic light at the intersection of County Route 44 and State Route 208. There've been too many accidents there. There've been fatalities in that whole stretch of 208 for for years since since I've been here 20. 21 years. Uh, another solution I think the county should take a look a little longer term, add either a wider shoulder or a foot and bike path on one side of County Route 44. This way uh, pedestrians won't be in danger. They're walking up uh, they're walking up at sundown on Fridays and up and down the road all day on uh, on Saturdays. And the other thing would be okay. uh, street lights. Thank you. Thank you, John. We'll relay that to the sheriff's office as well as uh, Commissioner, yeah, DPW, Public Works, rather. I see Katie taking a lot of notes and, and Barry, so those are important concerns, and we'll uh, <laughs> we'll uh, forward them on. Definitely important concerns. Thank you. Next speaker, Gail Jeter, uh, regarding the Valley View Family Council. Good afternoon. Um, I'm, call, I'm here to invite you to our next legislative meeting. Uh, the Family Council it consists of members who also work during the day. They're unable to come to these meetings and discuss their issues and problems. Um, they are interested in uh, Valley View's budget and Medicaid and how uh, your decisions are affecting them as well as the state's decisions. Our next meeting is March 2nd at 6 p.m. This time is good so that the work, the, the sandwich generation and those who work during the day can also uh, participate and the residents, everyone can take part. Um, we did request it in December, but at that time, our meetings were earlier in the day, and I know that that was not conducive for you either because that was a time that you were working on your budgets. Uh, so if at all possible, I would like to go back and say that either this day is possible or that you would let us know what day it would work for you, okay? Okay, we'll discuss it and see what's amenable, definitely. The chairman of health and mental health too, Jim. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, Brett Muncy regarding the Second Amendment. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Brett Muncy. Uh, let's see. I'm a gun owner, an NRA member, member of Black Rock uh, Fish and Game Club. Not re representing any of them at this point. Not right now. Um, basically, I'm here to uh, kind of put it in your ears um, that's, you know, I'm, I'm tired of being you know, someone that's blamed, not me personally, but gun owners being blamed for what happens in other places. We uh, had the unfortunate event of Sandy Hook. Our governor held legal gun owners responsible for what some person did in another state. Uh, we've seen uh, what's going on, down, what happened down in Virginia. Uh, the, uh, we had a massive gun, rally, gun rights rally, and uh, literally 22,000 people showed up. They were expecting 
violence, some kind of unrest. They actually left it cleaner than when they arrived. Uh, let's see. Really, I'm just looking to say that uh, you know we have a state legislature that's ready and willing to do this governor's business. And that's going to make a lot of us legal gun owners criminals. Uh, there's a uh, proposal in the state Senate and Assembly to have uh, psychological uh, testing for anyone, for any gun that you purchase every time you buy a gun. I'm just looking to say, again, uh, that I understand that there is a, a Second Amendment uh, sanctuary proposal here at the uh, legislature and uh, that I would like to encourage everybody to to uh, support it and uh, pass it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried.